we come to a real cracker of a race. This should be, this is the A final for Formula A. And remember, the fastest 10 cars from the three A finals will comprise the grid for the super final. So this time, they're not just racing for places, they're racing against the clock as well. And it is, once again, those easy distinguishable colors of the practical computers car that's gone away into the lead. John Welch, of course, starting from the back of the grid, can see the rest of the field fighting it out, getting a bit dusty there as they go down into and round the S's. Squibby in third place, I could see. And the dust clouds causing a lot of problems for the drivers at the back part of the field. Uh, there's Mick Quaif and Vic Moist who've been delayed, no doubt, by the dust. And John Welch, though, a clear view of what's happening as he goes round the Rui Terpin. But through Langley's Gap and along the knife edge, it's Steve Palmer from Richard Hutton. A good battle there between the two RS200 drivers. Gary Baker, number 100, and number two, Trevor Hopkins. But back with the race leader, and it's Stephen Palmer in the lead from 110. But there again, we go back with John Welch as he hounds Mark Flatty, 6R4, over Hoppy's drop and down onto the Cooper Strait. Up through the gears, there goes John. Very quick, then hard on the brakes for the chicane. Well, we can see him coming now, but there is 16, Barry Squibb with the X-Track, but there's Steve Palmer, our race leader. And of course, with Michael Shield not around here today, Michael having left Rallycross after dominating the first round here back in February at Brands Hatch, this second round is probably going to see Stephen Palmer go into the lead of the championship. Michael Shield has gone into Formula Renault, circuit racing, as uh, Dennis Biggestaff and Mick Quaid pick their way through. We ride back with John Welch, Screen Sport in car camera, giving us a very good view of what's going on inside the car. And John, it is... But there we see is Stephen Palmer, still very much in command of the situation here. Stephen Palmer coming away in the lead with the 3.6 V6 normally aspirated car. Still John trying to find a way through, and you can see the dust, Alan, causing quite a bit of vision problem there. It is, it's a severe problem when it gets really bad, because you go barreling into a dust cloud at 100 miles an hour, and somebody stops in front of you, there's not a lot you can do. No, and on a day like this, with the sun shining bright, as they go on to Hoppy's drop, the sun is right in their eyes, and yes. this can be a very, very hairy place there indeed, it can. It can indeed, but John taking a very wide line, and then diving through to come down on, try the inside line on Mark Flatt, he has it come off, no it hasn't. There you can see still Mark holding the advantage and the young driver from Berkshire who's a relative newcomer to uh, Rallycross with this uh, Will Gollop prepared car keeping a tight line there really ensuring that John's not going to get through but we go back with this battle for the RS200 and Hoppy coming past Trevor Hopkins from Egerton near Ashford here in Kent goes past Gary Baker's 200 there a little crack appearing on the windscreen of John's car as the stones fly up from Mark Flaherty as they go along the knife edge once again over Hobby Shop for the last time. John trying to get a tight line out, but again, can't quite find. I don't think Alan, he's quite got the power he should have here today. Uh, quite surprising, in fact, because uh, John's car causes turbocharge, whereas the Mark Flauke 6 r was normally aspirated. So no That's right, and uh, one would have thought that maybe that would have had the advantage. He tries again. Out wide, tucks on the inside, a much tighter line, but Mark's going to have that inside line for the first part of the S's. Yes, he does. And he moves over, takes a tight line on the exit from the S's. John Cliss clips the tyres there, but taking a very tight line. Mark again moving over to close the door on John Welch as they come away then. Towards the checkered flag, we can see already victory for Stephen Palmer and a tremendous battle going on with Richard Hutton just taking the second place from Barry Scribb and a tremendous battle.